Hello and welcome back to Functional Analysis. And first, many thanks to all the nice people that support me on Steady or PayPal. And I can also tell you that now you find the PDF versions of all new videos in the description below. So this is part 10 today and we will still talk about inner products. In particular, I want to prove the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Depending where you come from, the equality is known by different names, but I stay here with the most common one. And here it's named after the French mathematician Cauchy and the German mathematician Schwarz. Indeed, this inequality is very important because it holds for all inner products. Therefore, let's choose an f vector space x and an inner product. And we also consider the corresponding norm, which is the square root of the inner product. And then, with these notations, the following inequality holds. We look at the inner product x with y. And because it could be in general a complex number, we need the absolute value here. And then we can say this is less or equal than the two norms multiplied. And that's the whole Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Now we can visualize it with the same picture we had when we started with the inner products. In this multiplication, x with y, only the parallel part of y, the yellow part here, should matter. Then this picture tells you, yeah of course, the length of the yellow part is less or equal than the length of the red arrow here. With this in mind, we also get the result in which cases the equality here holds. Indeed, this should only be the case when the arrows go into the same direction. In other words, x and y are linearly dependent vectors. Ok, now the picture gets us in the correct direction, but we don't have any choice. We need to prove the inequality now. Ok, so let's start with an easy case. Let's call it the first case, where x is the zero vector. Of course, there we know the left hand side has to be zero. Simply by the linearity we can just pull out the factor zero. And of course the right hand side is also zero because the norm of x has to be zero here. In particular the general inequality is obviously fulfilled for this simple case. Now you might already guess the actual interesting case would be the second one. Here x is not a zero vector, which means we can divide by the norm of x. And that's what we do immediately. I want to define x hat as the normalized vector x. This means that x hat has length 1, so it just gives the direction of the vector x. And then we calculate the inner product with x hat and y and go into the direction of x hat. Now you might recognize that because if we have considered the normal Euclidean geometry in the plane, this picture would be completely correct and this expression is exactly this orange line. By our abstraction this should be the same here, so let's call the orange arrow just y parallel. In the Euclidean geometry this is known as the orthogonal projection of y onto x. So it makes sense to do the same for a general inner product. Now the gray line here is the orthogonal part, which we also can calculate now. This is simply given by y minus the parallel part. Ok, so we defined some vectors we want to deal with, but now we need an idea how to get to the inequality. Indeed, the whole idea is that we can calculate the length, or the norm, of this orthogonal part. Simply because we know the norm can't be negative. Now on the right we can put in the definition and then of course also the definition of y parallel. Now if you see something like this, calculating norms but you have an inner product, it's better to use squares. So square everything and the square roots will vanish. And now you can see on the right hand side we have this long vector in the middle in both components of the inner product. So it looks like this. And in order to simplify this, we will use the linearity. And this linearity in the second component means we can pull out this minus sign here. So we have here the inner product with y minus the other part. In the next step we want to pull out the minus sign here and here. And we know we can do that because the inner product is conjugate linear in the first argument. So minus signs are not a problem and scalars get a complex conjugation. 
So that's the first part and the second part would be this vector with y. And of course, now we do the same with the second inner product here. Okay, here we have y with the vector on the right hand side and now we have minus minus, so plus the rest. In fact, here we have the same vector left and right in the inner product. Therefore, now comes the part where we can rewrite everything again. The first thing is the norm of y squared. For the two parts in the middle, we see they are almost the same. The one is the complex conjugate of the other one. So we can write it in this way with parentheses where I put a bar over the second part. And finally, the last part is the norm of this vector squared. In the next equality here, I want to simplify that even more because you see here's a complex number plus the complex conjugate of this number, which means this is two times the real part of this complex number, which means that we can write it like this. And now in the third part, we can pull out the scalar, which means it comes out with the absolute value squared. You see it remains the norm of x hat, where we already know this is one. Now finally, I want to simplify the middle part here, which to be honest, we could have done before, but then we would have done it two times. I want to show you visually what we want to do. We pull this scalar out from the first argument of the inner product, but then it gets a complex conjugation. So let's fill in the gaps again, and then you see we have the same complex number left and right, but the one is the complex conjugate of the other one. In other words, it's the absolute value of the complex number squared. And since that is clearly a real number, we can omit the real part here. So in summary, we have the norm of y squared minus two times this number, but also plus one times the same number. Therefore, we can put both things together and have a simple result here. The norm of y squared minus the inner product in the absolute value squared. So this is our right hand side and on the left we have the zero. Hence in the next step I want to bring the inner product to the other side. Now you can see we are almost there with our inequality. The only thing missing is that we have to translate back x hat. Which is not so hard to do because we define it as x divided by the norm of x. Of course we do the same as always, we pull out 1 divided by the norm of x. Hence that's what we get and you see we just have to multiply with the norm of x squared on both sides. And then taking the square root on both sides, we get out our Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Well, that's the whole proof of the inequality. I will skip the part about the equality now because I want to use the time to show you that the symbol we use here is indeed a norm, so it fulfills the triangle inequality. And we will do that by using the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. In fact, the triangle inequality is most of the time the hardest part of a proof that something is a norm. So let's do that very quickly. Of course, we square the norm again. Because then we don't need the square root, we can just write x plus y, x plus y in the inner product. The linearity now gets us to a similar result as before. Namely the norm of x and y squared and in the middle we get two times the real part of the inner product. Now of course if we use the absolute value instead of the real part, it gets bigger. And of course here we now can use our Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. And now knowing the binomial theorem, you see this is just the square of the sum of the two norms. Taking the square root on both sides, you see this is simply the triangle inequality for the norm we defined by the inner product. The other two properties for a norm shouldn't be a problem to show and therefore now it makes sense to use this symbol and call it a norm in an inner product space. Okay, I think that's good enough for today. In the next videos we will talk a little bit more about the geometry an inner product gives the space. And I already told you, if you need it, you can download the PDF version of this video in the description. And of course, use the comments if you have questions. Otherwise, I see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye.